Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. This episode, you'll meet Lockie and Callum. Lockie, Callum, both mechatronic engineers. Lockie working on the mechanical design of the battery modules and Callum working on all things control. My name is Lachlan. I am a mechatronics engineer here at Switch. I do most of the mechanical packaging. So there's never enough space for anything. So the trick is to, to you know, maximize the, the space we're given to, to get the, either the maximum amount of battery in there or to optimize cooling. So the challenge right now is getting a hell of a lot of these into a battery pack. Um, so this is a 20 amp hour pouch cell. Um, this one's a dummy cell, so there's no electrolyte in it, which means there's no voltage across this. So this has been really helpful for us to build something without worrying about shorting or, uh, or hurting ourselves. This is the sort of current model of what we're looking to, to build. So it is 32 of these in a single module. These modules then go up and down to build a string um, giving you about sort of 900 volts or so. Um, the entire battery pack will be about just under 30 kilowatt hours, um, around 28. That should give us enough uh, full EV to go up and down a electric uh, only uh, mine run. So that's down a pit and then back up again. I'll show you a physical mock-up that I've built. So we've just 3D printed this. Uh, yeah, this here is a uh, mock-up of the, the module itself. So we've got a PCB along the front here. This is like a, a current collector of sorts. Um, we are going to attempt to fold two of the cell tabs over the top of each other over one of these copper bus bars and then use a, uh, a laser welder to weld them in place. This PCB will then give us cell balancing. So we will run these out the top, so the 16 cells will be 16 and then 16, giving us 32S. This will come out the top onto a BMS sitting on the side here and yeah, we'll have temperature measurement and all of our cell balancing there. So the thing I'm most excited about working on, 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 this, uh, on this project is getting to make an EV battery pack. So a battery pack that, uh, that moves, done a lot of static things in the past. Um, and yeah, that incorporates the, the cooling um, and yeah, vibration resistance, um, all of that sort of thing. So our current plan on where we're going to put these batteries is we're going to build a tub that sits sort of between here and going just over the top of the um, of the fuel tank there. Uh, this tub will be completely waterproof. Um, the only inputs and outputs it should have are a few HV ones going down to our motor and the motor controller and some coolant outputs and, and inputs for the cooling plates. The tub itself will be mounted very similar to how Toyota mount the tray. So we're thinking about taking something very similar to this, flipping it over and then mounting the tub inboard of this. Um, that also means that we don't have to do too many modifications to the tray. We can essentially just remanufacture these to make a bit more of a hoop sort of structure so we've got room for our battery tub. The battery module has had a lot of design changes. It's a very iterative process. The dimensions of the cell have changed a few times. Uh, we're now very confident that we've got the right information from the manufacturer that the, the cells aren't going to change now. Um, the ones I've showed before, that is what we're getting. Now I'm pretty confident we can finish the battery module. Um, one thing we're a bit worried about is the, the laser welding. Yeah, hopefully that works out for us. 
Um, we do have a backup plan of essentially clamping the cells. Uh, that's similar to things we've done in the past. Um, but yeah, really hope we can get this, this laser welding to work. Hey, I'm Callum. I work in the software and control teams here at Switch Technologies, specifically with the hybrid Land Cruiser project. I'm helping write the software that will run on a automotive ECU that will combine all the different pieces of hardware and get them talking and in the way a driver would expect. Things like integrating with the current vehicle, how do we read speed sensors and motor sensors and, and then how do we control the, the batteries and electric motors that's going in this hybrid vehicle. Over here I've got kind of like a, a general overview of what like the systems I'm helping develop. This is kind of high level. You can see in the middle of this picture is our hybrid ECU that I'm running software for and the other pieces of various hardware that it's talking to on this Toyota Hybrid Land Cruiser that we're developing. Things like electric motors, the charging hardware, how it interfaces with Lockheed's battery system and what user interfaces there are on the vehicle. So it'll be a touch screen and a bunch of controls that the driver can look at and confirm that the batteries and motor are working. There's a few other pieces of hardware I'm writing software for, so we're trying to log all the data because this is a new battery system. We kind of want to prove that it's working correctly. So there's some other smaller embedded CPUs that um, are going to log everything and use. it will use to upload all the data to the cloud so people can later on confirm that the battery is working the way we designed it. Yeah. Uh, we will go look at the actual pieces of hardware. Over here is my corner. Um, I've kind of got a very basic bench test set up. This metal box here is that hybrid ECU. So eventually it's going to get installed somewhere in the cabin on the vehicle um, and we'll have to figure out how to wire all the different sensors and um, other pieces that make this project work. And I have another piece of hardware, which is this data logger that I've also talked about. It kind of log everything and confirm it all works. Probably not a whole lot to show. Yeah, it's kind of early days still. <laughs> this last week, I've been basically just testing the basics of this ECU. So. One of the problems I had was trying to figure out how to update, like remotely update this ECU. It's not super easy to do. It's fine on the test bench when you're physically next to it, but if you're trying to update it over maybe 4G or spotty cell network, then it seems a bit harder. So I've been trying to test some different solutions to that because you know, at the end of the day, we're going to send this to a mine site. It's a prototype vehicle. Probably the software's going to have to change a lot while we do testing out in the field. It'd be nice to have that update software process simple and quick to use. The next sort of tasks are starting to write small pieces of software to integrate with the different sensors we'll be able to plug into that test bench. So things like angle sensors we have to add to um, the brake pedal because there's no, there's no sensor on the vehicle. Um, we have to add our own um, gear stick sensor um, the vehicle only knows if it's in reverse. Um, we need to know if we're in neutral and one of the five gears. Um, there's a bunch of other sensors like that. And there's a lot of sensors on the battery system as well, so you know, integrate all that, but it's early days still. I guess I'm really excited of actually physically putting this in the vehicle and, and seeing it control the things. I kind of get excited when you write software and then it does something in the real world um, and you get to see the results of that. It's cool to actually write the software that then tells a motor to output hundreds of kilowatts to the wheels of a vehicle. That's kind of exciting and, and just trying to make it all as intuitive and easy for a driver to use. We don't want them having to like mess around with buttons and stuff while they're driving. At the end of the day, we want the vehicle to you know, work the same as it used to and preferably the driver is pretty unaware that it's a, a hybrid electric vehicle now. Um, 
they just have more power and use less diesel. If you find this interesting and you want to follow this journey, then please like and subscribe. There will be plenty more.